So I've been listening to that. So you're talking about the. Okay. I'm going to call this meeting of the Veronica Valley Parks Committee meeting to order. Um, I think we can keep this one short. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I think that's the one, isn't it, Laurel? It sure looks like it. Roll call, please. Mr. Barron? Yes. Mr. Christensen? Present. Mr. Popa? Yes. Mr. Walter? Here. We have a quorum. Uh, approval of agenda. Can I hear the motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have an agenda. Public comment. That's why we're here. <laughs> Did you want to see something, Scott? Okay, so our action items. First of all, let's, well, I guess that would be after our, our tour, so we'll talk about that. Let's approve the minutes. I did read the minutes. I, I found them approvable. I read them online. They look good to me. Move to approve. All second? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry, Ms. that Christensen, and who is your second? Okay. Well, okay, we're going to shift things a little bit here on the agenda. First of all, Laurel asked the salient question. Was our little tour around the park in the cold wind ins inspiring, inspirational? It was for me. I thought it was great. It's always good to see what you're talking about. Yeah. Coming out of it, I want to be clear about some of the work chores and who's doing them. John and John here have already talked about um, first John Walter doing the drawing work to, uh, well, the drawing to fit the space that's actually there. So we start off with that kind of accuracy. And then between the three of them getting this painted out on the ground so that we and if necessary, the whole commission can physically see what we're talking about. Uh, <clears throat> John Popa needs help. Well, the two of you talked about the facing on the fishing walkway. Manpower. How's that going to get done? We did. We talked about, I'm willing to go out there, but I think it would be nice to have another person for sure, but should we have the third person? But. We're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to lay out some plans. I'm willing to get in the water. Uh, I can go get the material if someone gave me. But if you think you can, on some rainy day, pick me up and we'll go get a pile of them and stack them someplace. And you're busy in a summer. Is there volunteers on a list that are willing to do things? Uh, Usually there are people that say, yeah, I'm willing to help, but a lot of times they just plant flowers. And I, I am going to approach Lonnie Rodemaker with this question because of something he said to me uh, weeks ago on the phone and, and say we, we need one or two, preferably guys with their own waders, willing to do that for the, for the benefit of the pond and the fishing. And it's possible because he, he suggested there was some new blood in the group that he's. Well, Lonnie's a real good buddy of mine. I talk to him every couple of days. Uh, I'll talk to him okay. if you don't mind. No. Because Lonnie's getting out of that fish thing and he turned it all over to. Alan? Alan. Campbell. Yeah. Well, now there's. And the I, can, I can ask Lonnie what he thinks. Uh, and whatever, and Alan Excuse might come up with some people, but. Excuse me, I should shift that to Alan Campbell because coming out of the last meeting, he said to me, oh, well, I got manpower. We got, we can do this right. and we can do that. And, and, and he, he did, did say also about Boy Scout. 
But how come I said I'll do it? Because we're just going through another person if it's you. Because that person then is going to have yep. to contact me yep. if I'm going to do it. Yep. So I'll... Dave's got to be in the loop. Yes. Well. But in contacting somebody of what to do, well, anyway. I'm pretty Actually. sure Alan has waiters also. Oh. Well, I got good I'll go on then with on her day off. I got insulated ones. That's <laughs> fine. Unless you want to do this project in September. Well, I wouldn't wear my newest latest waiters which were way too expensive to risk a can nail, you carry these boards a down nail pull or something yeah. yeah if i tear those waiters i want to do it fishing i don't want to do it some something else well yes no it's like a maintenance item right so it just happens as it's Scheduled and done. So do you, you want to just provide an update to the full parks commission on this? It doesn't necessarily have to have because it's something. Yeah, I don't think we need a motion. Repair right. Yeah. Yeah. Just and an we're at a point where uh, we'll talk with with uh, Alan Campbell and see about the manpower issue because that's kind of the defining uh, question right now: is who, how. The extra set of hands, whatever. It's me. I don't plan on doing that. Okay. Okay. But we, some extra hands might help there. So it's actually still working on the power side. But, Scott, can you get the wood? It's kind of important that we do it from the county perspective so that we don't get charged tax. Right. Yeah, now I can't give you the credit cards here. So get the wood, and I can help you put it under a tree there, someplace, so it's available. Or what? What? Do you want help with it? Yeah. All right. We'll get the wood first. Somebody's going to talk to Alan. Do you want to? So I'm not the middleman on that particular project. Or, yeah, because he'd be. I'll the, keep you informed, like Steve said. Okay. Um, All right. I'll get the wood. And I'll talk to Alan about people. I'll get the wood as soon as I can. Um, I'll use the trailer. I'll have a trailer. So. And then that's it for now. Wood and talking to him. Well, I was I was struck by all of the talk we did uh, as we got around to this so-called dam. <laughs> what are we Steve, on well, shifting over to, to my final thought about what coming out of the walk. Oh. And there is no specific action on this initially except that. I have envisioned this UA walkway around the ponds as being a real value and blue ribbon idea for, for the park. And then I said a possibility of, of it being a 2% grant application item for next fall. Both Johns pointed out the bridge, the existing bridge is already uh, a UA acceptable slope. So why not think about this whole pond looping trail in phases and I think I should be chasing down all of the detail we need to go for the monies for that phase one, which starts at the parking lot and goes over the existing bridge as it goes around that first pond. Uh, and then this whole idea of the next phase not being all the next two ponds, just, just to, the, to the dam. And in redoing that, do it as a bridge I want John to do his his uh, gold star creation 
of his architectural career and give us a bridge to add to the whole park. <laughs> Uh, that's a beautiful spot. I mean, there's there's a couple of places where a really neat looking bridge would be really neat looking mm -hmm. in that park. But I kind of like that idea and then make phase two of this loop be that much, not go out around the whole next park. That's where my thinking went coming out of this whole walkway. Walk around. Nothing to do out of that right now. I'm going to start plugging in on some of that what would be required for that application for next fall. Okay. John, what is the slope for you at? One in 12. And, and a maximum rise of two foot eight before you have a five foot flat area. How far? Two foot eight vertical height, what, one in 12 pitch, so the bridge is not wearing themselves out for a mile. It goes up. Two foot eight, then a flat foot, five foot flat, and then you could go up another two foot eight. So the bridge isn't too long a stretch before no, it has uh, to get flat? No, no, it doesn't go more than the two foot eight. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Vertical. Vertical. Rise. It's a two foot eight rise. 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 And a two 12 foot rise. Uh -huh. Stop. Rise. Uh -huh. And we got a resting place already on top. Yeah. <coughs> Excellent. What was it? One in 12. We, did we come to any concluding thoughts for any of us individually about, I'm jumping now to the drainage pine, uh, pipe out of the ponds. My thought that um, at the minimum, rake debris from in front of the culvert. There's like a four foot stretch where there's sediment and rocks kind of in front of that culvert mouth. At the very least, that could be raked out to get uh, a little better flow out of the ditch. And, and Steve, you're talking about the outlet point or the inlet point? The culvert at the entrance. The in, input side. Input right. side. Okay. The, uh, the entrance drive has the culvert and that's partially blocked. So if that gets cleared, then the ditch line can flow out a little better. Okay. The pipe itself uh, could be partially plugged. I think the, the better that we can make that flow, the quicker the pond comes down after a heavy rain. Because right now, we get underwater pretty quick with a heavy rain. Uh, it'd be nice to have that drop as quickly as we can. So who's going to do that? That's a good question. Well, I'd be glad to, I love playing in the water. I'd be glad to jump in. <laughs> Grab a rake. On the, well, in the culvert issue, it, I, I see it, I saw it. I, saw, I, I know exactly what you're talking about, about opening up that flow. Yeah. So do that. But if you're talking about opening the, the drain pipe, um, then that's yeah. a different that's a different issue. Yeah, I don't know. Have, have you ever done that, Scott? Open no. that drain pipe? There's all the equipment to do it. If you want to call it equipment, it's just a rod with a brush on it. That's what Bill Grant used. You just shot it through there and pull it off the tractor or whatever. It doesn't seem to be plugged though, does it? It's blowing, but we can't see. We can't see the end in the ditch. Did you see the end in the ditch? We have to be able to see the end in the ditch. Well, let's dig all those rocks out by that culvert and get that towards level. Can you have the county road make that the first scoop of the year? <laughs> they're not scooping ditches right now, they're mowing. And we're seven people, seven short of issues. Can't you run that machine, John? I can, but I can do a rake and shovel easier. <laughs> so who's gonna clean the ditch by the culvert? It's about a one hour job. I'll go on and do it. I'll do it. 
Is that like 23 feet from where it leads to the third of the entrance? Well, I'm not, oh, you mean the hole, okay. Because you're thinking. Let's be clear on the job. You probably don't really care too much west of it, but from where it feeds out to that ditch to the culvert by the driveway, you probably want the tank. At least that much. Yeah, county county roads going to have to do that. That's their. It's about an eight foot section there that the water is flowing down, and there's rocks and sand in there from when they put that work in last year. Yeah, that that's the rake, but between there and the outlet, that's county road. County road's going to have to scoop. They that. can, yeah, but that doesn't look like it's filled up or plugged up. You can't see the end of the outlet pipe. No, but let's get the we flow lower the water ready. To, we have lower the water by that culvert, and then we'll see if we can yeah. see that. Yeah, that's the first step is make that drop into the culvert more substantial so it flows through all that filled area a little better. Yeah. And maybe we can then and start when, and when the county road the starts talking scooping, John will have to do that first. Right, John? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Don't tell him I said that though. <laughs> it won't help. Well, any feedback on my idea that we ought to chase a UA trail of some sort, I mean, planned out somehow as a 2% grant application I, I think, for next year? I think that that's worked its way to the top of the list. I'm comfortable with that trail being top of the list myself. My thought was just have the trail around that main pond, cross the bridge, and then go back out. And then that will be phased. Instead, one. and even Laurel mentioned that instead of putting a trail through all that pretty stuff and that secondary well just really too far for a person in a wheelchair unless he's pushing it but i would like to just see one around that main pond that's that's going to be a thousand feet or more and there's easy way to get out and easy way to get in yeah between, and, and steve steve's idea that we think about doing any of that trail development in in phases that is i obviously phase one and that's right. that's what i would look at for next fall between, yeah. between nothing more that and the porta potties I think those are neck and neck as, in my mind, is number one. Yep. Dave, because you're specifically thinking of doing a UA trail, I think you need to think a little bit more outside the box rather than just a 2% grant. Maybe contact um, an agency that deals with um, that particular issue and maybe they have some ideas on other granting opportunities. Because I would think this would be an excellent grant. Maybe Rotary Charities. Uh, yeah, Rotary Charities is a good add in. If you've got somebody that's wanting to do a donation, Rotary Charity. Yeah, this starts getting to the question that was raised at the full Parks and Rec Commission, uh, I think by Charlie Godbout, and that is uh, the question as to whether the county has a grant writer or not, and I know they don't or haven't had, and I don't, I'm not sure what I want to take on personally. I mean, in terms of chasing grants, um, these were from. It's this year. Okay. We had 5,000. Just Veronica Valley. Um, but for this wildlife platform? Well, we can talk about that. Yeah, we've got I, the I money. To, we don't have to do the platform, but we've yeah. got the money to spend. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Good. Uh, yes, I see your point. I think I'll talk to Jim. Oh, his last name at, at Disability Networks Northwest that, that he's written support letters for us because I did several of my interviews relative to disabled needs with him. And he's a good regional contact for that sort of thing. So that's a good idea. I will contact him about that because I think that that's a, a blue ribbon if we have access to fishing that's so so accessible for disabled, those in a wheelchair or not, but even that far, and then this trail, 
it's, and, and good porta potty facilities and all of it linked properly, that's, uh, that's top drawer, you know, for the county, for the use of the county park. Um, that's really top drawer, in my opinion. Uh, someone mentioned something when we were out there about potentially learning how to fly fish. There was a, Alan was talking about um, when he was here before, Alan Campbell, mm -hmm. about um, maybe stacking a few of the uh, bluegills. And Dave, you'll probably be there when they're doing it. But if they could put some of the bluegills up into that upper pond above the dam, that would be a perfect spot for fly fishing demonstration instead of just on the lawn put a spider out into that little pond and have the bluegills grab it so that that was an alan campbell idea and i i, I really liked it do we need to provide uh and this might might go through uh heather to lagus do we need to provide bait minnows for these things to grow do we do we John has said it a couple times to me, John Popa, we're not trying to run a class A fishery here. We're just trying to provide good, reasonable family access. But we can ask her here in another month or so what she thinks about it. Yeah, I, that's something I, I had in my head before, so we can get at that. You got to be a little yeah, bit gotta leery. Be, you got you got to be a little bit leery on that because I don't think the DNR actually raises minnows. Oh. They can come so with a lot of diseases on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unless someone has something more coming out of our walk around, let me move on to specifically. Uh, I'm not sure the difference between pond weeds and pond report update, but um, I don't have really any update there. I've looked at the products available through both the supplier you gave me the brochure on, and I've been on the Harrietta Hills website. And if we're talking our ability to get the right product for the for the weed we, or the algae we've uh, identified and somehow spread it by hand, we're looking at several hundreds of dollars instead of 2,500 to you know, pay Savin Lake services. Uh, the first step is going to be identifying what we have and exactly then what product. And Harrietta Hills, I'm sure the place that you gave me the brochure from, or the, the uh, booklet, uh, they would help identify the right product if you know exactly the right species of, of weed or algae. John Pope. Photographs, please, and then turn to a table on the right. That's right. And I've got that three hole punched and in my notebook, <laughs> the book that you gave me, because it has those identity photos. They're really well done. But that's the next step. And I have not made the connection with Ron Reinick or, or um, Brian Price yet because we. As I look today, we really haven't had enough growth to identify our problem. But John, I, somewhere you put out on an email, you you think we're going to face more of an algae problem, and I I agree with that. That's what I think we're going to face this year. That's right. So we we're talking about weeds, and then I looked over that company's bid and stuff, and he had a proposal there to also remove the algae from it and I went up to that back pond and stuff once in the summer and you can just about walk across that thing with the scum that's on top so let's say we don't do anything with pond weeds and all this other stuff I think we should look at that algae and this company did it but then you thought you're qualified to spray algae we don't need a permit we don't need a permit to apply we do need a, uh, a use. yeah, a, a licensed applicator. No, we don't need the licensed applicator. We only need the well. We do need the permit from Eagle. Is that what it's called? But yeah, we Eagle don't have, or just from or just from. Uh, but we don't need a licensed applicator, according to Heather. Didn't Heather suggest 
taking a pause for this year just to see which types of beads go back. And if you wanted it to attach the algae, you pull it out, you let it dry, and then you dispose of it. I don't remember her saying that about algae. But maybe I missed it. Yeah, she'll be here. I, we can quiz her again. I heard her She's say we here. should. I heard her make the recommendation we take we pause. I, I didn't quiz her on that. I I think we're going to have to do some management this year, of whether it's raking. You know. Well, let's um, keep that as an open item. We're going to have to oh, address yeah. algae. It's a problem every year, right? I've seen the same thing you have that it's actually grown. Expansively in the last two years, and that's Correct. since. And Heather said this; she supported it. What you did was wipe out everything, and the first thing back in this, uh, you know, wonderful incubator. The first thing back tends to be algae. Well, I think we, that's what we got. That's what we're going to have to fight first. I would like to be able. I, I would like to work at identifying ours, though, this year, and at least try hand distribution from shore for control of certain pockets. And you think we need a permit for that? Let's call Heather. Well, I did. I've asked her. Uh, do we need a permit to, uh, we, to we, hand, do anything with algae on our water? You know, she sent me the the place we can apply for the Eagle permit right on online. I mean, I've gotten that to Laurel. We've got that stored away. Um, but there may be, oh, the ego permit is dependent not on the size of the body of water, but on the area being covered. So if we can identify, we want an open pocket here, we want an open pocket here, add up some estimate of the square feet, we will get the most reasonable price, for, I mean, the cost of the permit. And we may be told at that lower, that small an area, you don't even need the permit. I don't know that part yet. How are you going to find out? Oh, um, probably go through their website. I know Savin was. Uh, I know Savin was um, over the year, last couple of three years, pushing for a few bucks early on so they could get the permit going. So there is some kind of a timing thing, and I don't know the timing of the permit. I don't know the timing of the sprinkling the stuff from the no. sidelines. So, but we know from Heather that it. Depends. It's probably multiple times you have to treat each year, and it depends on the exact stage you're trying to attack. With the, with with the granule. With the granule. Yeah. What stage of the plant development are you trying to attack? So the monkey's on your back? Yep. Yeah. For that's algae? The, yeah. Well, for this whole, that's the thing I wanted to say. I don't want to jump in the water and work on reinforcing things, but I'll ta I'm going to be taking on, I mean, I, I've understood this, making these connections with Ron Reinick and Brian Price and getting their input basically in terms of, uh, mostly in terms of ident identifying. Um, and they may have some wild idea that if, oh, well, if you're only talking about an open space right here to drop a bobble, okay. they may have some ident ident other idea for how we do that. But this I is Alan Campbell. Pardon me? This is Alan Campbell calling. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my report on update of, of uh, pond weed management stands, is yeah, that I, I right. with the warming temperatures it's now, we'll be getting with one of those, Brian or Ron Reining, and begin to identify uh, the problems and to inform them that we're not, we are going to pause some in terms of worrying about uh, well, instead of worrying about our being a source of um, European milfoil into Lake Leona, um, we, we, we're going to be careful there in terms of not wiping out the whole pond for all of the weeds. I think that's what Heather was saying about taking pause, not wiping everything out. Yeah. I don't think she's so against spot treatment. I think she'd be much more, well, I know she's much more in favor of that than anything else. She really would support the idea that this is not a big job. Take it on yourselves and, and manage it minimally for good fishing. I mean, minimally in terms of how many 
we should kill. But I think we're going to face a real algae problem, so that's what I'm looking at to stick with this spring. Yeah, the, uh, this is kind of a pause, look, see, learn year, and we'll be able to do some physical stuff and maybe even some spot treating, depending on timing and whatnot. But it's a good year for us to try to get our own hands and our own handle on doing it ourselves. Now, I suggest the greatest help we can give to uh, Lake Leelanau Lake Association is a couple of educational signs about cleaning up your tackle, cleaning up. Uh, Sue, as one of the lake's representatives that I have talked with, uh, did send me two samples um, signage, and I think I think in what she sent me, there's information on where they're available, but prepared signs, not something we try to write up ourselves. Uh, one of them was, I think, really appropriate, and there's got to be others out there, but we ought to look at uh, finding some available signage about cleaning your tackle, cleaning your boat, cleaning. But I think that's what the park can do with, with the best benefit to Lake Leelanau most immediately. Um, I'll have to chase on that some more. So the signage includes comments about bait. I didn't bring a computer to flip it open. I've got it electronically from Sue. Uh, yes, I was, I think I was thinking that it that was rather clever. It had to be yay size, and it's, it spoke of several different concerns. You know, take care of these things. And I think one was bait. Bait. Okay, I think so. Because that's an issue too. Absolutely. Well, yeah. In my mind, um, when you have kids' fish day, uh, there aren't a lot of boats, but there's an awful lot of bait, and typically bait gets saved and carried from one pond to the next along with whatever's in the bait <laughs> but anyway um, just a thought well what do you think i mean do i hear agreement that the signage is something we need to sure look at it's not going to cost us much money but that's something i i will get do we need to move do a motion for signage we you don't know what we're getting. We're just researching how much it's going to cost. Okay, so it's it's a matter of what, how much, and how many, and what cost. Yeah. Where, okay. Where, when, why. Okay. I don't know that I'll get this done by May's meeting, but I will track down a, a, at least one other source. It's well, another choice, so we yeah. get it into a packet and everybody can look at it. And if you, you know, if you're the accessibility, you know, when you're doing that, um, you know, if we order, do we get them in a week kind of thing? Because we meet early in June, and we could we could uh, be doing a motion to buy six such and such signs, da 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 da, and um, have that happen in the early June, and then have them available for the kids' fish day. We count signs as maintenance, not if they're new signs. I'm, I was talking out loud. Brand new signs we can't count as maintenance for the park. They're brand new signs. So, okay. Well, and we can adjust, you know, I mean, if there's a cost issue, you know, okay, we can't do 10, we'll do five. Well, I, and I think in terms of timing, it's something that I'll, I'll help keep us moving. I'll help keep us moving on it because I do think it's, it's a good step that we could achieve this year. Even if it's not a front well, I think end it's, a, it's a good, it's a good thought to kind of get out there because there's a lot of kids and families, and and um, a, quite a quite a percentage of them wouldn't even think that it could possibly be an issue. But if there's some signage and some talk about it, then all of a sudden more people realize that it's an issue. Wonder what signage saying I, I miss. Oh, it's it's essentially about don't let any vegetation from our pond leave here and go to some other body of water. Clean clean your boat, clean your your 
the mud on your boots. There is something about uh, ba yeah, right, exactly. Right. And this one, I got to find another source and another couple examples because while it was good, it wasn't quite as clear cut as I think some other statements could be. So, uh, and perhaps I can get that that Lake Association Committee to do some of that research for me and find some other sources for the for the signage. But I think that's something I need to keep us moving on for this year. Um, even if we don't get it done right at the front end, we'll make an effort to get the appropriate signage up there. In Utah, parts of northern Arizona, there are billboards, and they always seem excessively large billboards warning boaters about clean your boat and boat inspection station inspection station coming up all boats must must come in and like like a truck way station on the side of a freeway mm -hmm. um and that was to keep down quagga mussel that's interesting yeah they're much more sensitive sensitive to it on a broad scale because we already learned the, the, <laughs> the bad lessons of it here because you look at lake luna and there's like 15 access points or more there's a whole bunch but and and the, the the idea of trying to get a boat wash at every spot is daunting and be very difficult to do however if we had you must stop if you have a boat at this way station somewhere along i-75 along the road <laughs> along the road in the county, um, oh. you know, um, how many, you know, if you had maybe six boat wash stations in the county in strategic spots, would you get 90% of the boats? I don't know. I've just seen this, this huge, I hadn't thought of it this way, but I've seen this huge public effort out west to communicate about this hitchhiker, aquatic hitchhiker phenomena. And We've got the problem here, and I think the best thing we can do is help educate our park users about some of it. So I'll look around for some of that, and we'll consider it as I find detail. I'm done. Any addition from Steve, John? I think that's good. Good meeting. So we were able to update the draft proposed realignment of the Perfect. Correct. John's going to put together um, a drawing slash physical representation. John and John. We'll also lay it out on the site. And lay it on the site. Yeah. So the first thing is I'll go out and locate existing points so that what I draw is in reference to what's Reality physically there, there. And, and then let me get a spray can of paint from Scott and lay that out so that we could go out there and look at that and then modify it. Hey Scott, do you ever put? Do you ever have two different color paints, spray paint? Oh, uh, yeah, we do have a wheel. Okay. okay. Yeah. Why don't we go out there and actually inspect what's been painted? Actually, do the what painting? Yeah, the, he's talking about we're gonna the first the first painting. Oh, who, how do we go and look at it? Do we do it individually or do we go no. as a group? Well, the first step for me to go out and pinpoint existing conditions, and maybe I put a stake in, and I'll do dimensions, and then off from that, I would do a drawing so that the drawing. It's realistic. <laughs> and John and I were thinking he's he's we're, we can't do it this week, but the next week it's going to get warmer, I think, and we'll go do this pinpoint thing. And then, then he and then actually with, lay it out on the ground, right, with a spray can. Well, he'll then come up with a good drawing from the pinpoint. He wants like a corner here and a corner there. Here. Then he'll come out with a good drawing. Then we'll paint. So it gets painted, and Scott's comment was, how do we go and look at it? Do yeah, we go as a group? 
next week. Oh, okay. But just saying, just when do people go out there to look at it? Because we don't want to have it sitting for a month. Absolutely. We can call another meeting. Or or email or email around. That's Everybody okay. individually can stop and look at it, right? Yeah. But my answer to that, and I've been thinking about this, is that when I know it's done and it's painted, I would just make sure everybody knows and they ha and say, you've got to stop by and look at it because we're going to decide, decide this at our next meeting. Individually go look at it. Individually. That's why getting it painted out is going to be so valuable. And we will. Yeah, yeah First, sure we will. We're going to get that drawing. Yep. And so we're looking at a week or two. Yep. Yeah, we're, and we're just let maybe. let Laurel know, and she'll let, every, she'll let everybody know that it's done. Right. We'll, we'll do it. Uh, I don't know. I can get the paint and I can get a wheel from the road commission. But if you want to get the paint, you want to put a wheel. truck and whatever. Scott's got a wheel. Do we need a rope? Do we need a wheel before? No, he won't need a wheel till later. But if you would, okay. If you uh, here in this building, great, because I'll need it sometime soon. I'm set. Any more further comment? I oh, missed everything, right? Yeah, but so that was that was Alan Campbell. Uh, he's going to take care of the fish, and he says the price of the fish went sky high. And I says, well, you got to come and tell us that. And I invited him to to have to have him here on Wednesday at the Parks and Rec meeting that Wednesday, and we'll put him on as an appointment not public comment, because he wants to talk about the fish, he wants to talk about his Boy Scout help, he wants to talk about, he'd take a tractor and pull out some autumn olive and stuff, and I said, well, good, mark it and let Scott know, and put a ribbon on what you want pulled out. But there's some by the river, or some by the pond, and I said, don't go in there yet, and jerk everything, but we'll work it out. And then I talked about, he'll, come and help put these things in along the bank with us and stuff and do that. And I said, we're not doing it right now, but we're on our way and we talked about that today. And he talked about weed control a little bit. I said, so but is he coming then? He will be here that first Wednesday of the month at 3.15. We haven't set the agenda yet, so we can be sweet. Yeah, put it under... If, if you're setting the agenda, Laura, put it under uh, appointments or something, not just public comment, so that we can have a... It'll be an action, action item. item. Like Whatever. Lake Association report. report. I think we have two cycles to get a check cut, right? For Lagos Fish Farm? Uh, it would either be May or it would be June, yes. So we have two, two chances. Okay. But we really, yeah, I thought we really needed it in. Certainly, I've communicated to Heather. And she said we would have all final figures by our commission meeting in May, 1st of May. So she, so Alan's seen the invoice or what? What it is, is we get a bill. Heather provides us a bill from Lagos. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and that's what I, per, you know, we get it and we approve it as a commission, and that bill goes uh, into accounting. And, and all of that is done because the check has to be cut abnormally early in order to pay Lagus as he dumps fish. Exactly. And, and it's, it, it puts it into an earlier cutting check schedule than normal, so we've got to get it done in May. But I've told Heather, I'm hoping Heather has all that. Um, well, um, it's interesting. It's interesting because um, we spend, have been spending a certain amount of money, give or take a s minor change over the last like eight years with Lagos. Well, she gives us, when well, she does a report, it gives a timeline with a history of how much fish and the types of fish that have been planted and I think also how much it costs. And we've been what he's been doing is he's been raising fish in a single pond and we get them all. So that's something to think about. Did he say how much it went up? 
No, he said a lot. Well, I said, good, come to our next meeting and tell everybody, don't just tell me. Cause I don't know the final figure. If you want them, we can find out. But I don't know if he has the final figure. You know, keep in mind, we're not going to spend 2375 or whatever it was for seven. And it, we will spend several hundreds out of that. But we got some money to put back, to put into. That's a good point. Uh, put into fish. If, because it's going to be an issue if. Say if we went from 2100 to 3100. Mm -hmm. So, cash on the board, and over half of them are new, and it would be probably a good idea to just make sure that whoever presents to the board provides someone with an educational background. How much this well, Heather's going to be at the meeting, board. right? Well, I'm talking about, I'm talking about board, of commissioners. board of commissioners. I see. I'll, I'll do that. I mean, we can team we'll communi that. communicate now. So I certainly will take that on for that board of commissioners presentation. Uh, the more the better. Well, yeah, it's I can, true. I'll, I can be there. If I want even her to have the Lake Lehigh Lake Association member present as well, because it is a true collaboration between the county and the private. Alan would be a good good one. You know. Yep. What's the schedule on that? What date? May? May 9th is executive. Is that when, when, yeah, that's when it should be done. Sure, that's when they, they set themselves up for the next meeting. May 9th, okay. So who normally talks to Heather between now and our next meeting? Well, our next meeting is May. No, 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 the, the full commission. Parks and Rec Commission. May 3rd. Between now and May 3rd, who, 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 would, who will be talking with Heather? Well, I can regarding, I mean, just, I've, just, I've already told just, her that we need all of the final figures. Um, see, if, see if she can bring a bill from Lagos. Because that's what that's forward all her documentation to me for fusion of the packet and the bill would be So you've been in touch with her then? I haven't, but what I can do after this is just send her a quick first email and copy you guys and just say this is what we're looking for in anticipation of next week's meeting. Docs including Bill from Lagos. Okay, so Laurel will handle that. Okay. Okay. I think in the past we have just gotten the dollar figure, gotten that approved because I had the. He gave me the bill, the invoice when I gave him the check. No, but we had it ahead of time too. Okay. Because that's what I have to hand in. They won't write a check without that. Got it. Okay. Okay. Well, so we, the whole commission. Parks and Rec Commission may be faced with a significant increase in what our costs could be. So just to kind of back up a little bit, the way this works is there's an invoice from Lagos. Do, does the Lake Association pay the whole thing and then we pay the Lake Association a portion of that? How does that work? I don't think so because twice I've handed a check to Mr. Lagos. No, see, we pay ours. Lake Association pays the rest. Okay. Lake Association turns around and bills us for fish that amounts to $500. And that's a bill from the Lake Association. And we turn around and buy X number 0.656 fish that turns out to be $500. Because we can't donate $500. We've always uh, had it in mind that we would work with the Lake Association up to $500. So they bill us for fish and we buy another $500 worth of fish. So we buy our portion and then uh, Lake Association bills us for $500. Now, that being said, I'd, I'd have to look at the docs from last year just to see how that split out. And it, do we pay, I have a question, do we pay only X amount of dollars and the Lake Association pays the rest? 
I thought it was like a 50 50 split, but then we paid extra for certain of the fish. But it was basically 50 50 split. So that's that's the formula. It was always 50 50. Okay. I couldn't remember. Yeah, they turn then turn around and bill us for an extra 500 bucks a fish. Okay. Uh, I expect both of us will be talking to Heather. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, good. I think we're square on that. Are we not? Sounds good on timing. We've always pulled it off in the past. And it was more complicated my first year. My God, that took us an hour and a half to figure out the first year. Uh, do I have a public comment? If none, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 When I worked at the nuclear plant, mm -hmm. there would be meetings like this. <laughs> at least by the day. And my papers are looking at this, and there was some, and I got a stack of them now. And I look at the back of it, and it'll tell me about radiation waste and all that, whatever. And I save these drawings, and some of them are 30 years old. I got bullets, trains, I've got trucks with 10 wheels on, anything that's weird.